Hey guys, and welcome to A Lovely Masterpiece of a Life. My name is Brittany, and in this video, it's kind of a sit down, sit down <laughs> style video. I tried to say stand up and sit down at the same time, that didn't quite work out. But this is gonna be a stand up style video where I tell you some tips on Tuesdays about things that have made my life easier as a mom, or it could be something along the lines of just tips that I have used in my life. So I've figured this could be kind of a mini series on my channel. It'll make things a little bit easier on my schedule. And I really want my channel to be inclusive in the way that I film in really giving you guys the most, I guess, bang for your buck um, as far as living a lovely masterpiece of a life. Because let's face it, living a lovely masterpiece of a life is not just about having an organized and clean home and while that is one of the main components of having a lovely masterpiece of a life or having a life that is put together and feeling accomplished and everything like that there is way more to it and it has way more to do with your mindset than you will ever think so without further ado let's get into today's video on my 10 top tips of systems and habits that have helped my life immensely as a mom of two. And a lot of these things are things that I started implementing after I had my second baby. Some of them are things that I used to do when Bethany was little, but honestly, I felt like I got my life way more together after I had two kids under the age of two. So if you hear that little, um, by the way, if you hear that little sound in the background, I don't know if you can hear it or not, it's the baby monitor and it's in the bathroom. So I'm trying to keep like an ear out for the girls while I film. It's the only time I have to film these kinds of videos. So bear with me, but let's get right into today's video. The number one habit that has helped me the most out of any of these that I'm about to tell you is this one. Get up at least an hour before your kids get up. Why is this so important? I know that like me, I just wanna crawl back into my cozy bed right now, right? And take a nap while my girls nap. However, waking up before my girls do by at least an hour gets me time to spend with Jesus. It gets me time to get some things done that I really wanna get done without interruption, such as answering emails or just having some peace and quiet. Because if you're waking up when your kids wake up, you wake up really groggy, you don't have peace and quiet to kinda of get your thoughts sorted out as to what you're gonna do for the day, and you just end up feeling a little bit discombobulated and it kind of lasts most of the day when that happens for me at least. And don't get me wrong, I don't do this without fail and there are days when sleep is far more important than spending time by myself. However, I will tell you, it has completely changed my life to get up before my girls do. So Adeline is waking up around 7.30, which means that I get up at least by 6.30. And when I first started doing this, when Addie was about five or four months old, I started getting back to my own old schedule of waking up early before the girls do. And I started it with 30 minutes. 30 minutes before Addie would wake up, I would get up. And Bethany sleeps a lot later than Addie does, so it would give me at least 30 minutes completely uninter uninterrupted to myself. And then I started bumping it back as I got more into the routine of things, more into sleeping better at night, I would bump it back a little bit. Now, granted, I'm still waking up like three times a night to feed Addie, but it is still super important to me to have that time to myself. So I'm still getting up before my girls. And now I've worked it back to six o'clock. Addie wakes up at 7.30 and she's in her room now. So it's wonderful to have an hour and a half by myself, spend time with Jesus, drink my coffee, and it just gives me a great start to my day. The second one is this, completely cleaning the kitchen before bed. Because if you wake up in the morning early and your kitchen is clean, it kind of jump starts you onto the next thing. And even before completely cleaning the kitchen before bed, I would say the first habit you need to form before doing that is clean out your sink before you go to sleep because it will jumpstart you into wanting to clean the entire kitchen because you can't clean the sink without first doing your dishes and then you'll just wanna clean the counters up too because why not? So that has turned into completely cleaning my kitchen before bed which has now started me into the journey of cleaning up my entire living room before bed and my dining room and that is like the whole living space of our house and it's wonderful. It's a wonderful gift to myself to wake up to in the morning. So take a few minutes before you go to bed, even if you're exhausted, and just tidy up and clean your house. You will feel so much better when you wake up in the morning. 
The third thing is to completely keep the diaper bag stocked with your essentials for both kids. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because if I don't have this done, it takes me about three times as long to get out the door when I need to leave because I'm tending to both girls, trying to grab a bottle here, diaper there. Now I'm not talking like keep formula stocked in your diaper bag. Of course not if you're feeding bottles. But I mean, all the essentials that you don't need to grab at last minute, keep them in your bag, keep them stocked, keep, um, I'm talking extra wipes, extra diapers, um, games for your kids, snacks that don't go bad, that are like pre-packaged, all of those things. If they're already in your bag, you're ready to go. You can grab your bag from the door. All you have to do is round up the kids, get them dressed. And if you're already ready for the day, then that is amazing. And it makes your life so much simpler. Number four is when you come home, have a put away system, have a designated spot for everything that is important, such as your wallet, your keys, your diaper bag, and your jackets. We have a little space by the door that I recently cleaned out in one of my recent videos. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it right here. But we recently redid that space and it's just been so nice to be able to put my keys down and I know they're going to be there when I need to leave and I'm not spending 30 minutes looking for my keys. I'm sure that we've all done that before. So have that space where you can put your things away ready and accessible and will make you feel so much more put together. I feel like I'm saying it will make you feel so much more put together. It will make your life so much easier because it's the reality. <laughs> and all of these things that I'm telling you are things that I've tried out and are true to me. The fifth thing is to get ready and shower before your kids wake up or while they're napping. And the reason why is because you obviously don't want to have to be trying to get ready and keep an eye on your kids at the same time. It's very stressful and I've done it before in a pinch, but it is definitely not recommended. So do that while they're asleep and you will completely feel like a different person. You'll feel more like the person you were before you had kids when your life was a little bit more put together, putting on a little bit of foundation or a little bit of concealer, some mascara and lipstick will make you feel more like yourself again. And this is something that I started doing when I was recently postpartum with Bethany. During my pregnancy, I did not want to wear makeup at all almost. I was so tired and exhausted. And after I had her and I was still in the process of healing and my body didn't feel like my own, putting on a little bit of make it, makeup and doing my hair made me feel so much better about myself, so much more confident, even if I was spending the day with my newborn. And it's something that I've kept up since I had Addie. And let me tell you, it has done a lot for my self-esteem. Obviously makeup isn't everything but it does make you feel more put together. Especially when you have dark circles in your eyes like I do now, which you can't tell because I got concealer on. Number six is to have an activity or a special thing that you do with each child when they are awake with you. Now I try to coordinate nap times, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, but when they're not napping at the same time and one of them is asleep and then the other isn't, isn't, I try to spend individualized time and attention with both of my girls doing things that they like to do so that they get one-on-one -on -one mommy time. Bethany is at an age where she loves to color and she loves to do crafts and activities, whereas Adeline is at an age where she loves to play and like toss a ball around or do some kind of fine motor skill or read books. And both my girls love reading really, but Addie is really into board books right now and touching the pages. And both of these activities are best done when the other child is asleep. Now, this doesn't work for everybody I know, but if you have two under two and they're both still napping, this is a great tip to make sure that your, your kids still feel appreciated and loved and just that they have that one-on-one -on -one mommy time. Because if you don't fit it into your schedule, your schedule will get filled with so many other things. And I know for myself doing YouTube and filming and editing and everything that comes with that process, I really try to do those things when my girls are not awake. So it either means staying up a little bit later than normal or waking up earlier before them or trying to get as much done while they're napping. But doing these activities with them while they're awake really has made a huge difference in the way that Bethany behaves throughout the day and the way that Addie does as well. The seventh, seventh thing that I'm going to talk about is how important it is to, for your own sanity, 
try to coordinate your kids naps if you have two under two this was so difficult for me i tried for literally i think it was four months or five months to get my girls on the same nap schedule and i could not for the life of me figure out how to get my almost two-year-old to stay in the other room while i put the baby to sleep because it's way harder to put a newborn to sleep than it is to put an older kid to sleep and I was trying to figure out, okay, well, I can put Addie down while, while Bethany does this. And the only thing that saved me, the only thing that I could figure out what to do, and I'm sorry if you disagree, but I had to put on a show that Bethany loved. She loved Coco Melon. She still does. And so if I'm in a pinch and she will not stay in the other room long enough for me to put Addie to sleep, which is around 15 to 20 minutes sometimes, especially when I was first doing this, so I would put on a little show for Bethany. I would make sure there were no ads. <laughs> And I would let her sit there and watch the show while I went to the other room and put Adeline to sleep. And if Addie was sleepy enough, she would go to sleep within a time frame where Bethany would still be watching her show. She'd be enjoying it. And then I would join her and spend some time with her. And then when it's time for Bethany's time to nap, I would go get her and put her in her bed. So it's all about trying to coordinate, like, what can you do to make your kids, like, have at least one nap together? Because when you do, you get more time to yourself. You don't feel like you're running around. And obviously, I don't know if that this will be possible forever, especially once I have three kids sometime in the future. Um, but for now, it's been great to still have at least a little bit of time during the day to myself. Because when you have one kid, you still get like all, all nap time is your time to yourself. And once you have two, if one's asleep and one's awake, then you have to really figure out what you're going to do. <clears throat> the eighth thing is to keep an emergency caddy with the things that you need on a daily basis in your car. Now I'm talking first aid kit, of course, with essential oils or whatever it is that makes you feel comfortable as a mom that just in case anything happens, any tumble, any spill, any scrape, you have what you need. And also a change of clothes for both children. I have used these multiple times and replaced them. It's great to have an extra set of clothes in your car besides what you have in your diaper bag. You never know when your kids are gonna get messy. An extra pack of wipes, extra diapers, and snacks and fruit pouches, things that don't go bad, as well as waters. If you can keep all of those things in your car and, a, and an extra blanket or two for your kids and a little toy here or there or a coloring book, something to keep them occupied, if you ever forget any of these things in your bag, you will be so glad that you had them in your car. I used a diaper from mine the other day as well as my wipes because I forgot my diaper bag and Addie is already 10 months old and she's my second. So I'm really glad I had that in there. The ninth thing is to plan your meals out and get groceries on the same day every single week. We've been implementing this, I think, for about three months now, and it's been wonderful to know that Mondays, which is today for me, is the day that I go to get groceries. I like doing, doing it on Mondays because it's the start of my week, and obviously it's the start for everybody else as well, but some people like to do this before the weekends to make sure they're stocked up for the weekends. So Mondays is the best day for us. We plan out our meals. We get the things that we need. We don't buy the things that we don't need. And we plan out specifically what we're gonna eat for that week. For us, usually it's three to four meals a week. We've been doing three, three meals for a while now, but now that Bethany is eating more and Addie is also eating, we're gonna have to bump it up to four meals a week where we have those specific ingredients and we're good to go for the rest of the week. And it's nice to have fresh fruit and vegetables as well. So those are my nine top tips on how to live a lovely masterpiece of a life and the things that have helped me, systems and habits that have helped me the most as a mom of two little kids. So I hope this helped you immensely. It's a short and sweet little video and I gotta go get my 10 month old cause I hear her waking up, but I will talk to you guys very soon on Thursday and enjoy the rest of your day, you guys. You were created to do amazing things and I just want to encourage you and hear my voice as I say that you are more loved than you'll ever imagine, more beautiful than you know, and the things that God has for you are just amazing and I'm so excited for you to discover those along with me. So tune in for my next video and I will see you guys very soon. Bye guys. Sunrise in West Virginia, sleep talking on the front.
front porch, running barefoot to 